Hey, this is Malcolm341. In this video, we're going to look at some Maya modeling tricks and secrets. So today we're going to look at toggle the outliner and UV editor on hotkeys, how to edit the history of an object after you've created it, and how to import multiple models into Maya with one click. So let's get into it. So I don't think there's a default way to do this in Maya. I think the best you can do is actually just set a hotkey or make like a custom shelf button to turn the outliner on and turn the UV editor on but then you'd have to still go and manually do it. So for example, you could make a hotkey that does that, but then every time you wanna get rid of it, you have to come up here and close it. And I like to have all the screen space as much as possible. And same with the UV editor. I use both of these tools all the time. Once you've opened this thing, um, I don't want it on my screen for very long. I wanna constantly like, okay, like do that and then like go over here and I just find it really annoying that you have to move the mouse over here each time to do it. I'd much rather just tap a hotkey on my keyboard, have it toggle on, tap the same hotkey and have it toggle off. So I created a little script to actually do that for me and I'm going to show you how to bind it to a hotkey. You could also bind it to a button here, but I'll show you how to do the hotkey version. Actually, I'll show you how to do both here. So let's just open the script editor here. So how you make a button out of a custom script is really straightforward. You make a little um, tab that's a MEL window. If you have a Python script, you use the Python window, but this is a MEL script, so we use the MEL window. So basically, I've pre-written a script here, so I'm just going to copy this. And then I'll put the script in the description so you guys can paste it into your Maya. So I'm just going to paste that in there. And then so what you do is you select everything. You can hit Control A, or you can just drag select all of it. And then you use the middle mouse, and you middle mouse drag, hold and drag the middle mouse and drop it on your shelf, and you get a button. And now when we press that button, watch what's going to happen. I think this one was the UV editor. Yeah, it's UV editor. So when we press that button, you click it, and boom, there you go. There's the UV editor. Now the cool thing is when you click the same button again, it hides the UV editor. So it's a lot better than having to go through the menu, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then the cool thing is that we can bind it to a hotkey. So you won't even have to go up here and click the actual button. Um, the other thing is if, if you right click the button and you choose edit, you can come into here and you can go into shelves and you can give this a name. So see the tool tip, you could put a tool tip in so we can say something like opens the UV editor, whoops. Editor, and then you could put the icon label. You could say UV edit, and then hit enter, and then you can see it updates there, so you can remember what the button does. Okay, so next, let's uh, convert that same code into a hotkey, which I think is a better way to use it. So we're going to come up into Windows, and then we're going to go into Settings and Preferences, and then we're going to go into the hotkey editor. And this thing opens. And what we want to do is you want to come over here from keyboard to runtime commands. That's where we can create a new hotkey. And then in the category, you'll always want to put your custom scripts into custom scripts. Because if you start intermingling them in these menus here, you'll lose track of them. And they'll be really hard to find later if you ever want to like upgrade to a new version of Maya or you get a new PC and have to reinstall everything. Always put anything that you like download off the internet um, or anything that anyone writes for you, put them into custom scripts. So next, it's pretty easy. Basically, you want to go new, click that, and we're going to give it a name, UV editor, whatever. You can name this whatever you want. I don't know if you need a description anymore. In older versions of Maya, you did. Um, if it gives you an error, just make sure you type a description. So we'll say opens, whoops, actually toggles the UV editor. Okay, it's Mel, because we talked about that earlier. You don't need a subcategory. You can just put it in custom scripts. A subcategory is like a folder within the custom scripts folder. And then we can go back to this guy and just right click and say edit and just copy this. Like I said, I'll put this in the description so um, you won't have to do that. And then you just paste your code here. And then we say save the runtime command. This is super annoying. This always gets me. Um, and I think it's because you can't have spaces here. Let's just test this. Let's put an underscore UV editor and see what happens. Save. Yep, super annoying. So they don't allow spaces for the name, whatever. It doesn't matter. You can have spaces in the description, just not in the name. Say OK to that. And then we're going to assign it a hotkey. So you select it here. And then the hotkey that I like to use it is uh, Control plus T. So you just hold down Control and you press T. 
and it's all good. It says it's already assigned to the universal manipulator, but I never use the universal manipulator. It has literally been 18 years, I think, maybe more than 18 years since I've been using Maya, and I've never used that tool. Um, but uh, you can assign it to whatever hotkey you want. Uh, and then we just click Save, and that's all good. Everything's good. We close this down and uh, come back into the viewport here and press Control T on the keyboard because that's the hotkey I set. And boom, there it is, Control T. And then I press it again, and boom, it's gone. So it's really cool. Now we have a toggle for this uh, for the UV editor. So uh, next, we're just going to set up the same one for the outliner as well. Um, again, I'll put the code for this guy in the description so you can copy it because I'm just grabbing it off of a text file I have on the other monitor. Paste it in there. Save the runtime command, say OK, save and close, Control Shift T on the keyboard, boom, outliner, gone, open, gone, open, gone, open, gone, open, gone, open. Super powerful. So um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy those scripts. OK, so next up, let's look at uh, editing the history of an object. So here's my cylinder. I've just created it. What you can do at this point before you've kind of done any modeling functions on it, you get a chance to make adjustments to it. And so you can do that over here by clicking on these inputs. And you can see there's like all the subdivisions and stuff here, you know, whatever you can type in 16 and you can type in the number of caps you want to have and kind of mess around with the different settings. But um, you don't actually need to go over there. So what's cool is at any time you can just select your object and you can press T on the keyboard. And it'll actually bring this window open, which is like a lot handier. And you can um, scrub and slide the number of divisions. And you don't have to kind of go all the way over here. And you can change the number of these divisions. And the way that I'm doing this is you click the text here with the left mouse button. And then you move the mouse off of it. And you hold the middle mouse button. And then you drag left and right. And that'll actually scroll the... Uh, different number of whatever it is. So even with the caps there, you can see I can adjust that stuff as well. So even if you click off the object and that goes away, it will come back as long as you're in the T tool, I guess. So for example, if I click on it and I hit W, it's in the move tool and that's fine. And then if I like have it selected and I press T, it brings open this menu, which is the history menu as it's creating the primitive. These menus are also super handy. You can change the size of them and it will remember. So if you just drag it out, so you can have like a giant one. And then the next time you press T, it'll appear and it's still giant. I think I like mine just like kind of slightly bigger than default, like somewhere around there, I guess. So let's select a couple faces here and shift right click and extrude the face. And then let's say we do, what is it? Is it a thickness for a face? Yeah, so we do the thickness for a face to some like arbitrary value, some random like 14.8 or whatever. And then if you come over here and you say copy attributes, and then you go over here, and then you do the same thing, go extrude, and then you come back up into here and you go paste attributes, it's going to give you the exact same extrusion. So in certain situations, this can be really handy. As well, this menu usually just shows you the most commonly used kind of uh, history stack stuff. So you can also come into here, click it, whoops, click it, and see all this stuff that's turned off here? You can hit the check mark on any of these. So let's say, I don't know, twist. And then twist becomes available. And as you go in and out of these things, Twist will now stay there. I don't care about Twist because I never use it. So let's just turn that off. But if there's something you find that you've seen in here, but it's not available here, you can just turn it on through that menu. So one thing to note that uh, you can see there's the history stack building up there. So we created a sphere, accidentally moved a face, and then we did extrusion one and extrusion two. So often you can whoops, come back and press T, select the thing you want and press T, and that'll bring up that extrusion. If we go back to, where did it go now? Go back to extrude face one and press T. See, that's the extrusion for this. And sometimes you can actually still edit these. So on occasion, you know, we could make an adjustment there and then we could come up to extrusion two and we could make an adjustment there. So you have a little bit of control at creation time, but Basically, Maya's history stack is terrible. It's awful. You get kind of a one-step process, and if you go too far downstream, which is not very far, chances are super high that if we go back into Sphere and we start changing stuff here, 
yeah, see what's happening. It's totally destroying the object. See, the extrusions are in like random places now. And basically, your whole model will just get corrupted right away. So there's certain things you can kind of edit as you create them. And like the general kind of number of verts, number of faces on the model, you can't really touch those without destroying everything kind of downstream from it. Upstream would be the first thing that you did in the stack, so the bottom of the stack. And uh, downstream would be the thing at the top of the stack because it's basically down from the creation point. If you've ever used uh, 3D Studio Max in your career, um, Maya's history stack is nowhere close to that. It can do like a couple things that might help you out like once a year, basically. But in Max, you can go all the way upstream and edit whatever you want, and it'll just magically work out. So what you can do, though, is you can come over here and you can select that thing there, the node there. And I believe it's under Edit. And you can say Delete Node. And that will work. That's totally safe to do. So you can delete things. Like we can delete the other extrusion now. Edit and Delete Node. And there you go. Now we have our clean sphere with the new subdivision that I put on there. Probably one of the more useful ones is actually in the Bevel tool. So you can see I've done a bevel here. And if you're new to Maya or whatever, you might be like, ah, oh, shit, I, the bevel's like locked in or whatever. You can actually just, if you still got the bevel over there on the right, you haven't destroyed the history or anything, you can just press T and you can bring the bevel window back up here. And so then you can change the amount of whatever you're doing there, change all that different stuff. So that, that's probably the one I use the most, actually. Okay, moving right along. Okay, so another thing that's kind of painful in Maya is if you wanted to import a bunch of files into your Maya scene, which I need to do pretty regularly at work, it uh, it doesn't let you do that by default. So I'm going to show you like a secret little trick that you can do to actually get around it. So if you go File and then you go to Import, and I'm just going to go to my desktop here. So see, I've got a bunch of FBX files here. And it only lets you select one at a time. Like, what the hell? So I'd have to go import the cone and click it. And then the cone comes in. Then I have to go file menu, import the cylinder, and then bring that guy in. And then go file menu, import the whatever, the torus. And I'd have to do it one at a time. It's super annoying. I don't want to do that. It's so lame. So let me show you the trick. So basically, the trick is, I don't know why you can't do this by default in Maya, but the trick is if you make the Maya window like smaller, you can select all of these things. I just have them on my desktop. I'm just going to select these guys. You can select all of them, and you can just drag and drop them into the viewport, and then they all come in one click. It's so ridiculous. So basically, that's just like the secret way to import everything in a single click instead of having to use the file menu each and every time. So pretty cool. Thanks for watching, everybody. Without viewers like you, this channel would not be possible. If you like this video, please purchase something from the online store. Each purchase goes towards creating more video content and keeps the channel ad-free. See you next time. Have an enjoyable day.